Hello everyone, we hope you enjoyed our last tutorial covering editor use. All the necessary assets are included in the samples folder of the editor package. Let's put to good use what you learned in the last video tutorial. Start by creating a shader and a material. We will name our file burn shader1 and burning wood for the material. In the editor, let's change the name and category used by our shader. Set it to damage forward slash burning wood1 for the actual shader name. We set it in the material and we are ready to start adding nodes. We start by adding our textures. For that, we will need a couple of texture sample nodes. One for the albedo texture, let's name it accordingly. One for the normals. One for the mask, one for the wood specular, and one for the fire effect texture. Let's add the textures either by clicking on select and browsing the available textures, or by dragging and dropping the textures directly into your canvas from the Project Explorer tab. For example, let's delete the normal texture and drag it directly into your canvas. After adding the rest of the textures, connect the albedo and normal to the respective input ports of the master node. Hit update to save and update your shader. Not much to look at for now, so it's time to start creating our node network. We want to add our burning effect on top of the wood. We will need to set up a simple mask and an intensity controller. Let's create a multiply node by holding the M key and clicking on the canvas. The multiply node is extremely useful. It takes two values through the input port, multiplies them and outputs them through the output port. In this case, we are going to multiply the mask texture with the fire texture. When using textures, the multiplication is made per channel, meaning that in this case the fire texture visibility depends directly on the values of the mask texture. Let's connect the multiplied node to the emission input port. As you can see, black areas or areas with a zero value have no effect on the fire texture visibility. It's starting to look much better, but it's quite static. Let's add a Panner node by right-clicking anywhere in the canvas and typing its name. Click it to create a node. Connect it to the Fire Texture UV input port. We're going to alter its position in order to create a panning effect. It will also be possible to control the tiling amount. In order to manipulate its UVs, we will need to add a Texture Coordinate node and connect it to the Panner node. We can change its styling and offset value, but it's not very interesting to look at yet. We need to add a time node. This node is used to denote passage of time. It's very useful for animated effects such as panners, pulses or similar time-based effects. The time node outputs its values at different rates. Let's use the slower output for this example. It looks ok, but it could be more interesting. Let's take it a bit further by animating the fire intensity. To do that, we start by adding a new multiply node. Add a float for the intensity value, set its minimum to 0 and maximum to 2. Don't forget to change it to property so that we can change it in the actual material. Let's create an addition node. As the name hints, it takes two inputs and outputs their sum. As an example, let's drag it out from the node palette on the right. We will also need a scene time node in order to create a pulsating effect. Similar to the time node, it allows you to create effects based on repetitive oscillating patterns, such as a pulse or a flicker. Let's take the default time value and plug it into the import A of the add node. We need a value for the B input port, but instead of just creating a float and connecting it directly, let's set its value in the node properties. We will use a value of 1.5 for the B input. Let's connect the Multiply node to the Debug input port of the master node, so that we can preview it directly. It's a great way to debug your shader. As you can see, we now have a pulsating effect with an intensity controller. The Scene Time node outputs a steady repeating pattern. The Addition node adds a fixed value to the final output. With an intensity value, we can now control its visibility, easily achieved by using the Multiply node. Now all we need to do in order to combine the pulsating effect with the previously set up fire texture is to use another useful multiply node. 
connect both, plug it into the emission input port and click on the update button. Let's add a specular texture and a float for the smoothness value. To conclude, let's add a simple slider for the panning speed. I'm going to enable the live preview as an example. It updates and saves your shader automatically. I will add a multiply node and a float node. Set it to property. Set the minimum value to 1 and maximum to 25. I will also like to have this property on top of my Material Inspector tab. To do so, I will set its index value to a lower number. Since all the nodes are set to minus 1 by default, I will simply set it to minus 2. Properties are displayed in ascending order. Notice that material changes are immediately apparent. However, with default shader values depending on their complexity, it could take a second to update. If you followed along after watching the first tutorial, you should have a fully functional shader similar to this one. Feel free to experiment and create your own variations. If you have not seen the first tutorial that cover editor use, be sure to check it out. Would you like to contribute? Send us your feedback or samples, help us shape the editor to your needs.